This video is just the first part of the SNMP tutorial. Read and download the full SNMP tutorial at www.dpstele.com. Hey there, this is Andrew from DPS TV, and today we'll be looking at the SNMP tutorial by DPS Telecom. We'll start first with a quick introduction to SNMP. Since its creation in 1988 as a short-term solution to manage elements in the growing internet and other attached networks, SNMP has achieved widespread acceptance. Now, SNMP was derived from its predecessor, SGMP, which is Simple Gateway Management Protocol, and it was intended to be replaced by a solution based on the CMIS or CMIP, which stands for Common Management Information Service or Protocol Architecture. That long-term solution, however, never received the widespread acceptance of SNMP. Now, SNMP is based on the manager and agent model, consist consisting of a manager, an agent, a database of information between them, managed objects, and the network protocol. The manager provides the interface between the human network manager and the management system. The agent provides the interface between the manager and the physical devices being managed. The manager and agent use a management information base, or MIB, also pronounced as MIB, and a relatively small set of commands to exchange information. The MIB is organized in a tree structure with individual variables such as point status or description being represented as leaves on the branches. A long numeric tag or object identifier or OID is used to distinguish each variable uniquely in the MIB and in SNMP messages. So what can SNMP do for you? Well, SNMP can do a lot to make your network monitoring more cost effective and your network more reliable. The advantages of SNMP are, one, it's LAN based. Moving your alarm monitoring onto existing LAN or WAN infrastructure creates significant savings. LAN data transport reduces costs and transports data faster and more reliably. Second, it's an open standard. SNMP is non-proprietary, fully documented, and supported by multiple vendors. Third, it can be easily extended. SNMP is simple, but it's also flexible enough to describe almost anything. And finally, SNMP provides a common management platform for many different devices. If it's supplied with the right MIB file, an SNMP manager can correctly interpret alarm data from any device that supports SNMP. So now let's take a look at how SNMP managers handle alarm messages. SNMP uses just a few basic messages, including get, get next, get response, set, and trap, to communicate between the manager and the agent. The get and get next messages allow the manager to request information for a specific variable. The agent, upon receiving a get or get next message, will issue a get response message to the manager with either the information requested or an error indication as to why the request cannot be processed. A set message allows the manager to request a change to be made to the value of a specific variable in the case of an alarm remote that will operate a relay. The agent will then respond with a get response message indicating the change has been made or an error indication as to why the change cannot be made. The trap message allows the agent to spontaneously inform the manager of an important event. As you can see, most of the messages, get, get next, and set, are only issued by the SNMP manager. Because the trap message is the only message capable of being initiated by an agent, it is the message used by DPS Telecom Remote Telemetry Units, or RTUs, to report alarms. This notifies the SNMP manager as soon as the alarm condition occurs, instead of waiting for the SNMP manager to ask. The small number of commands used is only one of the reasons SNMP is simple. The other simplifying factor is its reliance on an unsupervised or connectionless communication link. This simplicity has led directly to its widespread use, specifically in the Internet Network Management Framework. Within this framework, it's considered robust because of the independence of the managers from the agents. That is, if an agent fails, the manager will continue to function or vice versa. So how do we understand the MIB, or Management Information Base? Each SNMP element manages specific objects, with each object having specific characteristics. Each object or characteristic has a unique object identifier, or OID, consisting of numbers separated by decimal points. An example might be 1.3.6.1.4.1.2682.1. Uh, these object identifiers naturally form a tree, and the MIB associates each OID with a readable label, such as DPS RTUA state, and various other parameters related to the object. The MIB then serves as a data dictionary or codebook that is used to assemble and interpret SNMP messages. When an SNMP manager wants to know the value of a, an object or characteristic, such as the state of an alarm point, the system name, or the element uptime, 
it will assemble a get packet that includes the OID for each object or characteristic of interest. The element receives the request and looks up each OID in its code book or MIB. If the code is found, which means the object is managed by the element, a response packet is assembled and sent with the current value of the object or characteristic included. If the OID is not found, a special error response is sent that identifies the unmanaged object. When an element sends a trap packet, it can include OID and value information, or bindings, to clarify the event. DPS remote units send a comprehensive set of bindings with each trap to maintain traditional telemetry event visibility. Well-designed SNMP managers can use the bindings to correlate and manage the events. SNMP manager, managers will also generally display the readable labels to facilitate user understanding and decision making. This video is just the first part of the SNMP tutorial. Read and download the full SNMP tutorial at www.dpstele.com.